the formidable robot. Recent allegations have been surfacing of a lost Cartoon Network pilot back in 2008, during CN's prime time airing. During the airing of Star Wars The Clone Wars, a pilot for the show, Population Negative, was accidentally shown after the creator was arrested for heinous crimes. Population Negative is one of those uniquely weird shows, where it uses symbolic and often disturbingly distorted visuals to tell its episode's story. Each episode is split into segments with a commercial break before the second segment starts. The creator of the show was Darwin Adams, a French-Canadian artist with a fucked up sense of humor, who makes disturbing alternate cartoon pictures where cartoon characters do the most fucked up things, including Yogi Bear shooting Ranger Smith, or Tom and Jerry smashing themselves with hammers. The inspiration for Population Negative, according to Darwin, was seeing The Matrix as a teen, and dreaming of making a visually stunning adult TV series with a splash of SNL and horror movies he loved watching, including Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. Population Negative is the cancelled 2008 pilot from Cartoon Network that was supposed to air in February of the same year, but the pilot was rushed and moved to June of that year. The cartoon series was about a dystopian world run like the movie 1984, and each segment plays a disturbing almost crime scene-like story in the style of a cyberpunk horror movie. The pilot had two segments, My Fallen Arches and Cold Feet. The episode started immediately with a bustling city coated in grey black and white fog enveloping the screen, before the first segment's title card was shown, My Fallen Arches, with a depiction of a guy clutching his one leg in pain. The episode started with a man brushing his teeth and looking at a mirror. He stares at it for a minute before a voice was heard saying, You're nothing! Before the man punched the mirror, shattering it. It jump cuts to blood splatters and groaning sounds, Hollywood quality. Then it switched to a guy bandaging his leg, obviously the bandaging wasn't properly done, and as time progressed, the wound got more and more infected. The blood turned dark, a pus-colored orb was shown on the injury, the injury was on the back of his foot, and each time he took a step, the orb jiggled. The scene cuts to a guy eating dinner with another guy. Then a bottle being smashed was heard, followed by the same guy stabbing the injured guy in the neck. He was screaming but the audio was muffled, people could read the lip movements and made theories that he's rather saying something about money for drugs or rent, but it was hard to pinpoint. The guy, who was sitting on the chair clutching his neck, tried getting up when the injured leg broke, the bone snapping, and he collapsed on the ground, causing him to choke and scream. The scream was replaced with a loud beeping sound, kinda like the emergency alert system. It lasted for four minutes before the episode cut to commercial break. People who watched the episode experienced high ringing in their ears and a brief experience of deafness. Then the next segment appeared. The title card was shown on a freezer door of a restaurant, Cold Feet, written in frost on the window. The segment started with a chef, being abused and tormented by a crazed tiny chef who often smacked the former chef, called him numerous names. The shouting from the latter tiny chef was replaced with car horns screaming and dogs barking, and even got the former chef's finger cut. The chef, people dubbed George, was depressed, so one night when the restaurant closed, the chef locked himself in the restaurant. It was a dream come true. He thought he could practice his cooking, improve his work, tidy up the restaurant, whatever he could do. Unlike most people who would go scurry for food, George packed food and water, but he later ran out of food after an incident with the chef's dog being the bodyguard and eating his food. George had to lock himself in the restaurant's freezer for protection. The scene cuts to George, trying to make water by using a flame torch to carefully melt some of the ice to make water. When the torch accidentally burned his arm, he screamed so loud that it felt like a rape. He slipped on the water, which was turning into ice. He slipped and slid across the freezer before being slammed against the wall. George tried getting up but was permanently stuck in the freezer. He tried moving but felt like something was attached and ripping his hairs on his head. He sat there, given up on life and accepted death. The scene cuts to white before being shown an ice sculpture melting and someone cutting through ice. Then the segment ends with the credits while the body of George gets taken into the hospital, ending the pilot episode. 
to say people were upset and horrified was an understatement. Hundreds of angry parents managed to email the Cartoon Network CEO, directors, and even some of the workers to ban the pilot and never air it at all. Well, Cartoon Network shrugged and did what they want, they took the copies of the pilot of Population Negative from hard drives, and DVDs were taken and buried deep in the desert of Death Valley where it remains buried underground for years. As of 2024, none of the copies surfaced, no videos surfaced, and the only thing leaked was the promotional screenshot of Population Negative shown during the airing of another pilot, Welcome to Eltingville. Who knows if it'll surface, it's like the name of the cartoon series, population is definitely negative.